Hey, how's it going? I hope you're having a wonderful day. And I'm here at the Colorado River in Columbus, Texas, because if you ever wanted to see a river during sediment transport, when it's depositing sediments on bars and out in the delta, in the ocean, in the bay, now's your chance. This is happening right behind me. The river is at about, well, 19 feet above um, normal flow stage. You can see what's normally exposed uh, is all underwater now. It's, it's not quite to the top of the valley walls. The top of the valley wall over there is still about another 20 feet high, so it's got a ways to go, but it's getting pretty close. You see all these little swallows behind me, these little insect eating birds, they're all over the place grabbing insects out. These are things that got flooded out. Um, there's a lot of sediment getting transported from the banks. The banks are collapsing during the flood. And what happens during the bank collapse is a lot of insects that live in the banks get swept out and the swallows come and scoop them up. Lots of insects hatch too, little midges and things like that. This bar that's got a bunch of trees and logs jammed on it right now is typically a beach. Come low water stage, I'll take a walk out there and we'll see what's actually down here. Typically, this is a nice gradational path out to a sandy beach. And the beach, of course, is a sandy point bar. You can see where the water is in the trees compared to the bridge. And again, normally that's all exposed. Um, so what we're seeing is some pretty dramatic rise in the water. You can see the water is nice and brown too. That's all the suspended sediment. So there's a lot of suspended loads, a lot of silt, there's a lot of clay, there's a lot of mud coming from the banks. And over there, you'll see that the bank is actually reinforced under the bridge with some riprap. And that's just big cobbles of cement and limestone that they're hoping to stop bank erosion from. Bank erosion is a major source of sediment in these valley filling rivers. So the Colorado River, as I showed you guys in another video, is actually sitting in an incised valley. Uh, this river is cutting down, but also widening the valley. So the valley walls are getting progressively wider as the sediment gets dumped into the river and transported out to the Gulf of Mexico. So this fine grain sediment is gonna create a big plume that will feed the Colorado River Bayhead Delta. And we'll take a look at that Delta in another video. Uh, maybe I'll even splice it onto this one. And not only sediment gets transported, but take a look at that. There's a log. So in amongst our friends, the swallows swooping and grabbing insects, there's a tree trunk getting transported. Bayhead deltas typically have a lot of tree trunks, a lot of vegetation on them, and now you're seeing why. This is a log, a couple of logs and some branches that are getting blown along with the current. Um, sometimes they'll snag on a bar, like this right here. Sometimes they'll pile up. You'll find fossil point bars with fossil logs on them. you also find them in bayhead deltas. And that one is getting swept out to sea it's got a ways to go. It might actually not make it out to sea. It might snag on a bar. But then again, it might. If we were closer to the Gulf of Mexico, it actually would make it down there. There's dams on this part of the river uh, all the way up through Austin. Um, from here down to the coast, there's not really any dams. But from here upstream, there's quite a few dams. Lake Austin is one of them. So the dams help regulate the flow of the water. Um, but nevertheless, it's pretty spectacular to see. So we'll come back here and check it when the water levels are lower and show you what this looks like. So this is a 19 foot rise in elevation. We'll see what it looks like at normal flow rates when people are here fishing and launching kayaks and so on.